What it does, it puts us in the hot seat. It takes the pressure off of, off of an individual. You want to see someone squirm, you tell him, they're your cattle, now you sell them the best you can. There's no way out for us. No matter what we do, it's going to be on our shoulders. Now, if you take the options and the market goes down, we got a way out. But we're paid to burden, we'll put it, that responsibility. That's our job. That's what we're paid for. So by all means, give us the opportunity. Call in and say, hey, it's on your shoulders. I see Walt's coming through the, the pass. He's crippled. He'd be getting slower, too. <laughs> Walt is going to discuss marketing, some of the probably experiences he's had, maybe through the day. <laughs> and I would like Walt also to mention some of the uh, benefits of our future contracts. Walt. Thank you. Andy, I do apologize. But since you can't check me out, I'm going to tell you it wasn't my fault. These guys set me up last night on a schedule, and they said, now you got from here to here to be there, and then you got this much time to be here and so forth. And what they left out is that I'm slow as hell, and but then I can't control Hammond over there, got carried away and talked 10 minutes longer than he should have, see? So that's what put me behind. Uh, I've had a lot of experiences at this convention. 99% of them, though, have been, have been very constructive. They've been a pleasant experience for a director of a livestock department to have. Most of them have been extremely complimentary toward the respective divisions. As far as the livestock is concerned, in general... The emphasis in 19, fiscal 1982 is going beyond unification of the respective divisions. Now, I don't know how many of you have picked up one of our convention booklets. How, how many of you have got one of those? Well, I mean, how many of you haven't? Well, I'm going to tell you people that haven't gotten one what you're missing. It's better than the convention book that Mr. McLeish is holding up. It's the best it's the best informative commodity book that's been put out by this organization. And you better go get one down at the livestock booths. It also will show you that you as a livestock man or lady cannot walk into a producer with that book and only represent one commodity. It'll show you that Andy's people or the hog people, or the feeder people, regardless of their personal opinion about the other commodities, are going to have to be able to talk to that man about all of our livestock commodities because all four of our commodities are in that book and they're doggone well laid out and they're informative. Now, get one of them things and take them home. You can just have one. They're expensive as the devil. I think it was 17 cents a piece. Well, by God, you, you know, I'd print up 5,000 of them and pay for it with your pin money. They're, they are expensive. It was an endeavor on our part to show our own employees the value of unification. But it's also for the, for the benefit of the membership. You know, it's much easier for you to go home from this convention with one well-planned book than it is to have your pocket stuffed full of literature. So we decided to do it that way, and I, for one, just think it's a great piece of work, and if you're going around your community and talking to anyone that wants to know about livestock, you got one book that will explain in basic, at least, all of the respective livestock commodities. So 
read that son of a gun. It's, a, it's good work, and I can take no credit for it. It's the reason I'm trying to sell it to you. These people, Andy and the other guys, they put it together, and it's a darn good book. But it does tell you that no longer that old adage in the livestock department, if a hog employee goes out and solicits cattle, he's fired. I don't know how many of you people knew that, but that go, went on in the National Farmers Organization when I first came to work for you four years ago. I'm not laying on the hog department. It was the same thing in the cattle department. You go out and work on hogs today and you're, you're done. You go to work for the hog department and you don't have a job. Now that is no darn good. In the first place, when you're spending the members' money to hire employees, you need to put the bucks where it counts the best. Well, consolidation with and equalizing the talent will do exactly that. Now, in Dwayne's case, for instance, you know, it's very easy for Dwayne to go into a cattle feeder, take the fat cattle out, and encourage him to buy feeder cattle through our program, and I have an inventory of cattle that man might need. It's very simple, and it gives him an extension that he can talk to the guys about. For instance, that's what we're doing, and it's working extremely well. I think generally all of our people appreciate the fact that they don't have that undue pressure on them, that even though they're a hog employee, they cannot talk to uh, another commodity in the livestock, and, and, and as it would pertain to any of the department. Andy wanted me to mention a few of the options that you've got in fat cattle marketing in the organization. You know, when he asked me to do something like that, I don't know where to start and where to stop. And I don't want to take a lot of this meeting up because Andy and Dwayne have some very pertinent information that you must take home with you. But I want to tell you just briefly in regards to options, what have you got as a member of this organization in fat cattle? Well, uh, let me put it this way. You're a seller, and I'm a buyer. Now, let's just reverse that. You're a buyer, and I'm a seller. Now, I call you, and I say, Mel, I got 100 head of steers, and I really need to sell them. I want to sell them. How soon can you get out here? What's your immediate reaction to me? Your immediate reaction is what? I know what it is, because I was on your that buyer in for 20 years. My first thought is this sucker is in trouble, and I got me a fish, and I'm going to shoot him in the foot. <laughs> That's your first impression. Now, you can tell me anything you want to tell me, but if you don't tell me that, you're lying. Well... Now let me ask you this then. Some of you enjoy calling your local buyer. What's his impression? Can't be any different, can it? See, he don't think any different than you are. Every one of us is basically a damn thief. And he doesn't think any different than you do. You call him, you got hogs, you got fat cattle. He immediately doesn't say, I don't believe, I golly mail, I'll be there in the morning, I'm fresh out of cattle, the plant is destitute, and I think the market's going up anyway. <laughs> how often is that handled, hand, handed to you that way? I know how I handled uh, calls. I'd say, gosh, uh, you want me when? Tomorrow? Can't make it. I've, my guy's darn phone has rung off the wall all night. I got more calls than I can make the rest of this week. Tell you what, if I'm not there by Monday, go ahead and sell them. I'm loaded for next week anyway. As far as that's concerned, the damn market's going down to boot. That's what you hear most often, isn't it? Now, if you're truthful with yourselves, I have exaggerated to an extent, but not much. Well, four years ago, 
This organization, the livestock department, was in that same position. I didn't have any options for you in the fat cattle department. You see, where I was, I didn't, I didn't have much volume. When I first come here at the Omaha Convention, was my first, I come here in October prior to that convention, I didn't have any volume. Not, I didn't have enough cattle coming through that program to water shotgun. But you put me in the same position. You'd call me. You'd say, Walt, I got a load of cattle, and I'm a good member, and I want you to sell them for me. I didn't feel too good about it because I knew that you and I together didn't represent enough product for me to do you a damn bit better than you could do by yourself. Really, seriously. But I knew that as a member, you believed in collective bargaining and believed in the theory that if you participated and others started participating like you, the thing would grow. Well, I stood there in Omaha that time, and, and, and Staley had that gold ring stuck in my ear like a, or in my nose like a damn prize steer leading me around. You know, look what we got out of the industry here. And uh, all I could do was give you some if come. I said to you, gentlemen, I know if you give me the product, I know that it will build a market for you. I know that. But I said, I don't know how long it'll take, but I know that I can do it. And you had at least enough confidence, or unless you like to hear my Oklahoma accent or something, but you stayed with me. And for the last year... You've stayed with Andy, and you're at where we said we would be four years ago in Omaha, Nebraska. What you got right now, you take a buyer and you call him to your place, neither of you have any options. His head buyer that morning has said, Charlie, you buy the cattle today this way, period, or leave them alone. Now... He's also said, Charlie, the cattle will go to this plant only. Now, so when you call that buyer to your place, in fairness to him, he doesn't have any more options than you do. You got one option, he's got one option. You can sell to him or you don't have a buyer. You can go to, he can only go to one plant at a one way to buy the cattle. Now, in contrast... Today, Andy has developed a series of options that no one in the packing industry as an individual has. In the first place, he has the luxury of two or three ways each day to sell your cattle. He can sell them grade and yield. If his opinion of the market is such that he thinks it's going to be a bull trend next week, the, the live buys and the flatten the meats this week are simply a, a packer attempt to take advantage of a bull trend next week. Andy already knows it too. He'll throw them over on the grade and yield and take advantage of the up next week on a formulated basis. If there's a bear trend next week, but the packers have overreacted in the country and they're short on inventory, Andy knows the bear trend's coming, but he also knows there's a short inventory and the packers are having to stretch to buy cattle. He can sell them today flat in the meat. He also has developed another luxury of live on hoof sales. I never could get that done for the organization, but Andy's got that developed now. He has got now every way there physically is to sell cattle available to you on every set of cattle you want to market. And you have not got that option with anyone else in the fat cattle industry, period. I imagine you've already told them you got the best cow program in the nation. And by God, you better, you do. He, he's got that option available to you. I don't know why you're not taking advantage of it, but you better. If you don't, you're in trouble. It's that simple. Collective bargaining, as Mr. Woodland said last night, will work. I made that, I'm, I'm wrong. He said marketing will work if collective bargaining prevails. It's this simple. You got this much volume, you got this much ability to bargain. That much volume, that much ability to bargain. And it continues to work in, it's a synonymous factor 
It goes together. Only if they're collectively put together in one unit. Now, if ever one of you gentlemen and ladies in this room independently took that same volume and offered it to me, but individually as a buyer, then you go into the tube. Because one of you is going to break over and sell it to me cheaper, and I can use that as a whip again the rest of you. And that's the way it works. There's another option that the lending community in this nation is, I believe, going to make mandatory in the very near future because of the economic, economic stress that the farm communities are under. Andy has a forward contract program in some areas, which doesn't encompass the whole United States, by the way, but he has a forward contract program available to fat cattle producers that will guarantee a return to you. Now, the return is predicated on your ability to forecast your production cost. Now, you've been very verbal ever since I've been in this organization that you want cost of production plus a reasonable profit. I question if you know what cost of production is. Now, you can't blanket this room and say it's going to cost 55 cents a pound to finish a steer because, again, you've got unique situations. So every one of you have got to figure your own production cost. But in the forward contract program Gary's got, the lending community is really buying. They feel very comfortable for one of the NFO members to go into their banks with one of Andy's forward contracts and tell the banker, I can buy the feeders here, I can sell the cattle as fat here, my production cost is this, I can lock in two bucks a hundred net profit, or three, or four, or whatever the factor is. Now, you have that luxury available to you through the fat cattle department. You definitely need to pursue if it's available in your respective areas. I'm not at liberty to say it's Andy's uh, program, and he knows where he can apply it and where he can't. If you're in an area where it isn't available, then I would suggest that Andy would pursue that area to see what his potentials are. I don't know. But it's a tool that's going to become a complete necessity as far as the lending community is concerned in a very short time. So you might as well take advantage of it through his program because it's already available to you people. It's in gear and the specs on it are easy to comply with. Holstein cattle only have to make about nine and a half uh, hot. They only have to grade about what Andy? 50% choice? 60? 60% choice. Uh, fat cattle need to yield around two and a half, and they need to weigh six to eight in the meat and grade about 80% choice. They can't have, I don't think, more than about 12% fours on them, 10%. So it's a, it's a program that's in gear, and you need to use the doggone thing. With that, I've taken up some time here, but there was a few things I think you need to be aware of. I question that you as participating members or non-participating members know what's available to you. You've got so doggone many more options in this cattle program than you have got anywhere outside that I can see absolutely no excuse to not take care of, uh, take advantage of. Thank you very much. I want you to know that I'm, uh, Andy is taken over kind of a pet child of mine as far as this department's concerned, I want you to know something else. The improvement I've seen since I stepped out of there makes me want to kind of keep quiet about it because I'm afraid Woodland will see it too. <laughs> Thanks a lot, and I hope you have a good convention. Thanks. Walt has given me a lot of credit for some of, I should say, quite a few of the things that he's accomplished and handed over to me, really. I'd like to, before I go on, kind of clarify a few of the terminologies that we've had 
I think we as staff people are a lot like that grandparent or that uh, parent, I mean, that is so close to the situation they can't see it. And we talk about flat bids, we talk about a grain yield, we talk about a guaranteed bid. And at this time, I'd like to give you the definitions and what they are. Now, if it's boring to some of you, just try to realize that maybe the guy sitting next to you doesn't have the slightest idea what we're talking about. So, let's start with the flat bid. The flat bid is a bid in the meat for all your cattle. If you have a 40,000 pound load, say you have uh, 40 head of cattle, your bid on that cattle would be one price for all the carcassed beef. To give you an example, let's say that we could sell cattle today, flatten the meat at 99 cents. All your carcassed beef would be priced at 99 cents. Then we can go into the grade and yield. And that is just what it says. You're paid for the yield of your cattle, plus you're paid for the grade. The grade would be so much for your goods, so much for your choice, so much for your fours, and so on. And then we have a guaranteed bid in a grade and yield, where you would be pri your, your cattle would be priced at a figure before they left the farm or the feedlot. To use an example of that, let's say you would be bid 99 cents for your choice or a dollar for your choice, 95 for your goods, $10 off for your fours. No matter what the market did, if it went up or down, you'd still have that bid, that graded bid. I want to kind of clarify that because when someone mentioned flat in the, in the beef or a flat bid, there was a question on someone's face. So I hope that clarifies it. We have another program in our department that Walt has said before, it's second to none. And that's our Call Call program. The Call Call program started out much like the Fat Cattle program. It started out, I believe, at $2 under the sheet on a graded program, whereas if they were canners and cutters, boners and breakers, or boners and breakers, they'd all be priced at a different figure, two dollars under that quoted national provisioner, the day of kill. Today, the National Farmers Organization is the largest single supplier of cows in the nation. How did we do it? The cull call program is probably the truest sense of collective bargaining that the organization has. And by that, I mean it starts all at the membership level. The member calls the county coordinator. The county coordinator calls the collection point manager. And the collection point manager calls his area staff representative. I'm going to give you an example of Wisconsin, the Wisconsin-Minnesota block and how it operates. The functions of collective bargaining that I'm going to give you should operate that way 
in all areas. We sell our cattle in Minnesota and Wisconsin constantly at one figure. All the cows to go at one figure. In some areas, we're still using the yellow sheet as a guide to price our cows on a grade and yield. But it so happens that the total state of Wisconsin is under, a, under one block and part of southern Minnesota on that same block. And then we use part of South Dakota and Minnesota on another block, sold at one figure. And the way it operates, I'm going to repeat myself a little bit. May I have the lights, Tim, please? Ooh, I better turn that on first. Okay. As I said before, can you all see that? All right. I'm going to outline a little bit of it, and I'm going to discuss it as I go, so I hope it'll bring it out a little bit more. As I said before, it all starts at the county level. And these are our collection points, we'll say. We'll have five of them. The, the county coordinators called the collection point, or the, the member calls, calls the county coordinator, then the county coordinator calls that collection point. And he tells the collection point manager how many cows he has for that day's run out of his county. In turn, the collection point representative or manager, whatever you want to call him, totals his cows for the day that he's going to run. Let's say this collection point has 200. That point has 200. They all got 200 cows. The area representative, the staff man, in turn calls the collection point rep and asks him how many cows he's going to have for that weekly block. In turn, the, the staff man calls Corning. A thousand head of cows for that week. Now, it's a known fact that the packer is looking for one thing in his packing house, and that, of course, is volume. And I think Walt kind of hit on the situation where if you all had one head of uh, a cow or a steer or a heifer or whatever you have, if you had just one head and tried to sell it to that packer, you would not be too valuable to him. And sooner or later, someone's going to pull a pin on it and lower that market. Well, what you can do is your one or two cows become as important to that packer as the thousand cows are. Now, when the packer is talked to on a Monday afternoon, for instance, on the Wisconsin block, He's told that he will have, let's use an example of 200 cows on Monday, 200 on Tuesday, and so on. He's not told that there's going to be 200, out, under, 200 cows out of, say, Reedstown or 200 out of so-and-so. He's told that there will be 1,000 cows and the dates that they're going to deliver. So again, that makes your, your one or two cows more valuable. Now you can use the same concept in collective bargaining and go into fat cattle, where you're one or two or three loads of cattle. 
are equally as important as the thousands of cattle that we will sell to that packer in a week's time. Now what can this do? And how does it work? I have an example here. And if you can't read it, I'm going to give you the figures. This is an example of the USDA marketing reporting service out of the state of Wisconsin. Their average price over a three-year period versus the national farmer's average price in the same area. Now, as you look through it, uh, in some areas, there's eight, nine dollars a hundred difference. The area that I want, or the month I want you to look at, is October 1979. The average Wisconsin price, according to their marketing news service, was 49.40. Our average price was 50.40, or a dollar a hundred more. Let's go back to 80. 46.50. Ours was 40, 48.80, which gives us $2.30 a hundred more. Could I have the lights back, please? Or approximately a $27 per head premium on those cows. Now, why did I use October? There's a good reason for that. I could have used one of those months that they had the six to nine dollar ahead, but I didn't want to use that. I wanted to use some of the important months. In October, normally, it's the time of the year where your western ranchers are culling and your cows become readily available and quite cheap. So why at that time can the organization in one case get a, a dollar a hundred and a, in another case two dollars and thirty cents a hundred more than the average? Well, it's because when you're talking to that packer and negotiating with him, you constantly remind him that you're going to be in the market after the fall runs are over. And it doesn't take much persuasion for him to realize that you are in the market on a daily and a weekly basis. Now and then you may have to remind him that it takes a lot of staff to round up a thousand cows and a lot of cost. Therefore, that cost should be returned to the membership. And it works quite well. There's a fella in Wisconsin We've marketed over 300 cows for him this year. And it's uh, Marshall Edmond and Associates out of Arena, Wisconsin. Their main office is in Madison, South Dakota. Ed uh, Stangler is the manager for that company. And Ed has said himself and has given me permission to use his name that he has received $8,500 uh, $8, more for those cows that he has marketed through the organization. $8,500 more than he could have gotten anywhere else. And that's after the expenses. So as you see, we can do our marketing. We have the ability to. At the present time, we're doing business with 26 to 28 packers on a daily and a weekly basis, and numerous other packing houses on a, oh, numerous periodic basis, we'll put it. I'd like to also cite 
another example of an individual that's well pleased in our marketing. His name is uh, Francis Feeder. Francis was interviewed on uh, the Here's, Here's Allen program, which you're all aware of, I'm sure. And Francis has stated that he used to go to the Milwaukee stockyards and always receive something over the extreme top, or be on the extreme top, I should say. And someone in his area had asked him to try our program. Well, Francis stated that he, he did, and he received $6 a hundred over the Milwaukee stockyards. Now, I certainly can't stand here and tell you that you're going to get $6 over any market. But I can tell you, folks, that we can do a better job than anyone else. Our history shows it. We can market on a collective bargaining basis annually better than any organization or anyone, any one individual can. I'd like to close with a little statement that I have prepared. And it has a lot to say about the organization. And it's something I'd like to have you all keep in mind. We fail to see progress, and we can't accept failure. But we, ha we do expect success, and we have it. Thank you. <laughs>